Hello everyone, my name is Manish Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Hicks logical ordering theory or we can say that a revision of demand theory. British economist John Hicks published his logical theory of demand in his book named A Revision of Demand Theory in 1956. This theory is based on preference hypothesis. Preference hypothesis mainly shows the scale of individual preferences. For example, there are so many mobiles are available, but I always choose Samsung mobile. This will be shows my preference towards Samsung mobile. Next, this theory is based on logic of ordering. That means consumer always express the same order or we can say that consumer behavior always shows consistency. For example, in one situation, I like Lakme product. But in other situation, I reject Lakme product. I will not like Lakme product. Now, my behavior is not showing consistency means my behavior is changing again and again. But this is not applicable in this theory. According to this theory, consumer behavior will always show the consistency. And assumption of this theory are preference hypothesis, more commodity always prefer than less obviously. Consumer behavior is rational. That means consumer behavior is not influenced by his emotions. There is consistency in consumer behavior as we earlier discussed. There is two commodity and this theory mainly based on weak ordering. In this theory, Hicks tried to explain both strong ordering and weak ordering, but mainly use weak ordering in this theory. What are strong ordering? What are weak ordering? We will discuss next. Now we will see strong ordering and weak ordering. Under strong ordering, everything has own place position and specific order. Under strong ordering, everything has own place, position and specific order like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Here you cannot replace a 5 with 1 or 1 with 5 because everything has own, own place, position or specific order. Second thing, you cannot be indifferent here. You have specific like or dislike for something. For example, you like product most which is in number 1 position as compared to product which is in fifth position. On the other hand, under weak ordering, everything is in cluster like this. Everything is equal for uh, you because here you can see uh, things don't have any number or order. Means you cannot ordering it. Everything is same for you. Everything is equal for you. And you are indifferent for all. Means you don't have any specific like or dislike for something. Now, with the help of this diagram, we will understand weak ordering and strong ordering. In this diagram, on x-axis, we have commodity and y-axis, we have money. Here you can see we have two options, A and B. Suppose you choose A over B because you think A is superior and B is inferior. You choose A over B because you think A is superior and B is inferior. It will be called uh, strong ordering. On the other hand, you choose A over B because you think both are equal and by chance you are choosing A, it will be called weak ordering because under strong ordering, everything have a own place, own position. You have specific like or dislike. But under weak ordering, things are like a cluster. All things are same. You don't have specific liking or disliking. According to Hicks, consumer behavior must be shows consistency. As we earlier discussed, consumer behavior must be consistent. Consumer should not change his behavior again and again. That's why in order to know consistency in this theory, Hicks talks about consistency test. With the help of this test, we will see consumer behavior is consistent or not. In first case, we have uh, two options, A and B. A is my first best option and B is my second best option. If A will not available, then I will choose B, otherwise not. Otherwise, I will always going to choose A. So, in first situation, this part, O, A, A, when this part represent my first situation. In first situation, I will choose B. But, in second situation, I will choose A. This part, O, B, B. When this triangle represent my uh, second situation. 
here you can see in second situation this triangle is inside this triangle na? so we can say that in second situation both options are available a as well as b in second situation i will choose a not b now my behavior is consistent or not my behavior definitely is consistent in first situation i choose b because my first best option a was not available but in second situation when both option was available i only choose a because a is my first best option so definitely my behavior will be called consistent now we will see case 2 here we have two options a and b a is my first best option and b is my second best option when a is not available then i will choose b otherwise not otherwise i am always going to choose a so here first situation is o a a1 means this triangle represent first situation here you can see in this triangle both options are available a as well as b so definitely i will choose a because a is my first best option but in second situation you can see this uh, triangle o b b1 this part represent uh, second situation o b b1 this part so in second situation you can see only b option is uh, available a is not available that's why i have to choose b because a is not available in this case my behavior is consistent or not my behavior is definitely consistent because in first situation when both options uh, was available I choose A because A is my first best option. But in second situation, A was not available, only B was available. That's why I have to choose B. So my behavior will definitely call consistent. Now we'll see case 3. Here first situation is O, A, A1. I mean this triangle represent a first situation. Here you can see in first situation, only A is available, B is not available. So definitely I will choose A. In second situation, you can see this triangle O, B, B1. This triangle represents second situation. In second situation, you can see only B is available, not A available. So, I have to choose B. So, in this case, my behavior is consistent because in first situation, only A was available, B was not available. And in second situation, only B was available, A was not available. So, this behavior will be called consistent. Now, we will see case 4. Here in first situation, O, A, A1. This triangle represents first situation. Here you can see both options are available, A as well as B. So you choose A and uh, reject B. In second situation, O, B, B1. This triangle represents second situation. Here again both options are available, A as well as B. But in this time you choose uh, b and reject a so this behavior is not showing consistency because you are changing your behavior again and again earlier you choose uh, a when both were available but now you are choosing uh, b again both are available so your behavior is not showing consistency your behavior is fail in consistency test now we'll see derivation of demand theory through hicks logical ordering approach like other economists, Hicks also re-established demand theory with the help of logical ordering approach. So, what do you mean by demand theory? Demand theory mainly tell us when price increase, demand fall. When price fall, demand increase. So, in this diagram, you can see A, A is initial budget line. And this A point shows initial preference or we can say this A point shows initial equilibrium of consumer. Now suppose the price of X fall. As price of X fall, that means consumer can buy more quantities of X or we can say that as price of X fall, real income of consumer increase. As real income of consumer increase, his budget line will shift forward. This AB is new budget line of consumer. According to Hicks, now consumer can establish his equilibrium anywhere on this uh, new budget line. He can establish their equilibrium here, here or here. Anywhere he can establish his equilibrium on this new budget line. It's okay. But logically according to behavior of rational consumer, a consumer should establish their equilibrium at this E point. Because how does the rational consumer will behave? Rational consumer will increase demand as price will fall. So, this E point shows demand increase as price fall. In this A point, you can see 
uh, when price is op demand is oq but at this e point you can see as price fall demand of consumer increase from oq to oq1 so this a point shows behavior of rational consumer so according to hicks when price of uh, x fall consumer should shift from this a to e point now in order to know rationality and consistency in consumer behavior we will take away increase income from him now in order to know rationality and consistency in consumer behavior we will take away increase income from him suppose we have taken ac amount of income from him if we are taking away income from him that means his real income will fall if their real income will fall his budget line will shift backward so his new budget line is cc the cc show new budget line of consumer so now where will consumer will establish his equilibrium obviously consumer will not establish their equilibrium in this area because this is already rejected area if he will establish their equilibrium in this area that means his behavior is not consistent this is already rejected area so in any case consumer will not establish their equilibrium in this area but he can establish their equilibrium from this point from here to here he can anywhere establish his equilibrium suppose he choose uh, uh, this t point so his new equilibrium point is uh, uh, is on this t point so this will be called consistency and rationality in consumer behavior now we'll see criticism of this theory according to some economist this theory is based on rigid concept and not applicable in every situation and consumer are not always rational according to this theory consumer are always rational but consumer are not always rational sometime they have limited information sometime their behavior is influenced by their emotions social pressures etc and uh, this theory mainly used weak ordering but uh, weak ordering uh, don't describe a specific liking and disliking of person and uh, this theory is based on only two commodity but there are more than two commodities and this theory only applicable in static analysis and not applicable in dynamic situation so this is all about uh, hicks theory i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video by taking